All right, so now that we got all of our seeds in, we want to cover them up lightly. Um, when you use trays, you really don't want to plant your tomato seeds too deep. You really want to want to plant them about that deep, about a quarter inch maybe, because they can just get trapped on, down under there, especially if your soil's too wet. It can just really just get stuck in there and it'll never push out of the soil. The seed will germinate, but it won't actually push out of the top. So in about a week, maybe longer, it just depends on the temperature and um, the seed variety. You'll start to see a little tiny thing pushing out the soil, a little uh, U-shape, and that'll be the plant and it'll slowly come up and then the top of it will poke out just like that. So um, yeah, don't plant them too deep. They really don't need much. The key to it is to just keep them moist. So they don't need to be sopping wet, but they do need to be moist, especially after you get them wet <clears throat> the first time and they start the germination process. You don't want to let them completely dry out again because once that seed starts, and if it gets dried out again, it can kill the seed off. So you don't want that to happen. You want to make sure it stays moist. Um, you can start seeds in anything. Some people use little pots to do it. I like to use seed trays just because of the scale that we do. We plant hundreds of tomatoes. Right here is um, over 200 tomatoes. So we plant hundreds at a time. So it's best to just do this. And if you have multiple varieties too, make sure you're labeling your tomatoes. We have these nifty little labels here. This one says sun gold and it says the date that it was planted. It really helps just to keep things organized and to make sure you don't get your tomatoes mixed up. I've had tags fall off before and I didn't know what kind of kind of tomato it was the whole time until it started fruiting. So, so that's frustrating for your crop, for your yield. You don't know what you're going to get and you don't know where to place everything. You don't know what kind of care it needs. So make sure you're labeling everything. We have six different kinds of tomatoes. So we have six different tags and I have my tags facing a certain way. So I know the tomatoes facing down that way. When I'm looking at it, I have that kind of tomatoes if that makes sense. So make sure you always label them and don't plant them too deep. Make sure your soil too, when you do plant, is nice and moist. You don't want it to be sopping wet because again, you'll get that, you'll get a compaction effect and it'll just trap the seed under too much soil and too much wetness. So you just want it to be moist. Um, you should be able to hold it, you should be able to clamp it together and it sticks together in your hands. Um, but it also shouldn't just be like muddy and like like water like seeping out of your fist when you do that. So it's a fine balance. Um, it's best to just shoot for a moist soil. It's the best thing. And after you plant too, right after you plant, you want to water. Um, I recommend watering overhead for the first one just to really get that seed wet and the soil on top wet. But if you're using trays, you, a trick that I use, especially if you need to leave the farm for a day or two, is you can lift up these trays and you can pour water right into here. These have holes in them. so the water will actually sponge up from the bottom of the tray and that'll keep your cell nice and moist and nice and wet and it won't suck up more water than it can take it's like a sponge so it'll reach a saturation point um, so your water won't just be like drowning in it of course you don't want to just keep it sitting there but eventually it will evaporate up through the soil the water underneath so that's kind of a trick that I use to keep my plants watered so they don't have to be watered every single day. It also keeps down on any type of splashing 
that you would get onto the leaves from the soil or anywhere else. Um, it's best to have these in some kind of greenhouse, especially if you're in a northern climate. I'm very south here in Florida. I have a greenhouse during the winter time, but I don't need one right now. It's so hot out. Um, I actually just want to have it here in my carport in the shade, and that should be about the perfect temperature, 80 to 85 degrees on average. That should be around perfect. Perfect's like 75 to 80. So that should be good enough to have a very good germination rate. Um, if it was sitting out in the sun, the cells would dry out way faster and they would bake and the seeds would dry out like we were talking about before, which would not be good for it. So you have to think about that. But if you live in a colder climate, you don't want your cells to be sitting in a sopping wet, cold um, cell waiting a long time for it to dry up. So you have to find a balance. Every environment, every microclimate, it's a little bit different, but once you start growing, you'll get tuned into everything. We recently moved to this uh, new farm here, and even this farm has its own little microclimate compared to our other one. Even though it's only a couple hours away from the other farm. So if you live in a different state or a different uh, USDA zone, then it's definitely going to be way different. And if you don't know about zone, USDA zones, they're plant hardiness zones, so it tells you your average frost date and what plants grow best there. It's very useful information. The USDA has the whole country mapped out. Even if you live in Canada, they have the zones too. Every every country has a zone, has its own zones. Um, so that's very helpful. It's something to look into too, to really tap into your individual microclimate. We're almost done here with these seeds. We're finishing up the last ones. And then we're gonna do a light overhead watering. You don't want it to be blasting them, gushing water. If you have a like a mist sprayer or like a light sprayer that you can turn on low, that would be ideal because you don't want to disturb any of these seeds because they're, you know, just a quarter inch right there under the soil, so you don't want to wash away anything. And you want to be very gentle with them. Once they're up, they're obviously a lot more hardy and they can take a lot more. But um, yeah, when you get those seeds started, you really want to baby them and make sure that you keep a close eye on them because they could dry out quick and your seeds could be gone. So let's get these watered and let's do it. All right, there you have it. We got our three trays of tomatoes going. And this should be enough for our garden here. We are gonna have a 10,000 square foot garden here in the front. That's the plans right now. And uh, yeah, this should take up about 12 beds of that I'm going for. So actually no, I think it'll only take up six beds. Sorry about that, I was doubling up the beds. So each variety is gonna get its own row. And yeah, that should give us a nice cherry tomato variety and also have a few beefsteak varieties too. An orange and a big beef and some romas to go with it too. So we like to have a variety for the farmer's market and for our chefs and just for us too, for our enjoyment.